Hi all, I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, November 4, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today, Matterport plus Leica BLK360, 20 questions and answers. And here to talk to us about that is our subject matter expert, Mike Chawaga, co-founder of Robotic Imaging based in Philadelphia. Hey, Mike, good to see you. You too, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Uh, uh, I've been a longtime member of the We Get Around Network community. It is awesome to have you on the, the, sh the show today. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume for the purpose of our conversation today that our audience are Matterport Pro 2 3D camera users, and they've heard of a like a BLK 360, and they're trying to understand uh, every which way to Sunday about whether it would make sense to, to buy or rent. or And so that, that's why we're going to ask the, the questions in behalf of really Matterport service providers that own a Pro 2 and are looking to maybe next, make that next step. Um, that said, Mike, before we jump into the, the 20 questions, uh, uh, how about telling us about robotic imaging? Yeah, so, um, so robotic imaging uh, started about four years ago um, out when I was visiting my parents in uh, Park City, Utah. And a gentleman came over to the Matterport camera, was, was, uh, was sharing like, what, what he was doing with property management, how he was just using it internally for his firm. And uh, asked if um, you know, we'd be interested in learning about it, and so he kind of turned us on to it. He's our service provider out there, and um, we started scanning like larger industrial and commercial properties in which the Matterport, you know, wasn't too friendly in the big open space. Where um, the end result that the that the, the client that we were servicing was an architect and developer that needed as-built drawings for a hundred thousand square foot industrial space, and so after scanning it. A few times the Matterport learning the hard way. Um, we bought a, a Leica BLK 360 on back order in 2017. Six months later, it came um, and we were able to successfully scan uh, actually with the Matterport app right when they rolled it out and then uh, quickly became obsessed with, with LiDAR. Um, we started building our operation mostly out of Philadelphia and we focused on the capture process and streamlining um, what the architects, engineers, and construction firms need extracted from that data. And then, um, you know, storing that information, maintaining that data and uh, converting it into usable CAD and Revit design software, whatever they're using, whether it's SketchUp uh, or any of the 30 design softwares out there. That's what we um, specialize in, in converting that uh, information. So that's right, it. Cool. Like, yeah. And, and uh, OK, I, I hear capturing, I hear scanning. Uh, what else be besides capturing and uh, scanning is robotic imaging doing? So we do a lot of point cloud analysis um, where we'll go out and scan, we'll take a, a point cloud, put it into a PDF, draft like the mission critical measurements on there and then deliver that to a client as like a kind of like 24 hour deliverable. Uh, and then we spend a lot of time in CAD and Revit. Um, Revit mostly, that's the a 3D modeling software that will, that will take the XYZ uh, point clouds from Matterport um, and we convert those into RCS. We convert all of our point clouds into RCS uh, file formats for, um, uh, for usability across Autodesk, and so that's like the unif that's like the, the key file uh, that we usually convert to. And then there's um, other uh, softwares like MicroStations, Bentley Systems, and they have um, they take PTS files, E57 um, generic file formats like that too. Um, and so, are you doing the scanning solely in Philadelphia? We do we do um, uh, all, all throughout the U.S. and we're getting some uh, inquiries in Europe now to scan uh, lidar for some of the bigger stuff. And um, uh, so uh, we, we use like just contractors that we find here and there um, to just go and, and tackle a region. So we get 10 retail sites in, um, in Atlanta or, you know, in um, Luxembourg or wherever, we'll, we'll try and source that data, um, data capture providers, so. Okay, cool. And uh, are you now selling Leica BLK360 cameras? We, uh, we are selling Leica BLK360 cameras and we um, are shipping Leica BLK360 cameras for people that are trying to get their feet wet and, and learn about the, the equipment. Um, so we do provide that uh, training, how to workflow hacks, um, you know, what apps work with the cameras and what don't, how to get through a property most efficiently. Um, and so, uh, so the hardware is interesting for us. It's, it's, uh, it's changing fast, but you still have your, uh, I think the Matterport data is still very usable. Uh, for certain use cases with that BLK information too. Um, 
from an standpoint. So I, I believe you, uh, that uh, robotic imaging is a uh, authorized Leica BLK 360 reseller. Correct. Yep. And yep. are you renting BLK 360s as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, we're, we're renting them on a, on a, a case by case basis. Um, and um, uh, we also, you know, we rent, uh, we won't have to talk about the other scanners, but but um, but the, the parent scanner of the BLK 360, the RTC 360 that produces the same files, uh, we, we're getting into that a little bit too, so. Okay, awesome. So uh, anyone that wants to find out more about robotic imaging, roboticimaging.io, roboticimaging.io. Um, uh, uh, great. I think really for my, uh, for my first of 20 questions, uh, what is a BLK 360? I, uh, do you happen to have one there? You can hold it up, show it. And, and... Yeah, I'll grab one. Um, I mean, I'll give you the, the walkthrough demo with the scanner. Okay. Uh, so, uh, incidentally, you can also, uh, email Mike. It's Mike at, um, Roboimage, I-M-G.com, R-O-B-O-I-M-G.com. So that's Mike at Roboimage.com. Uh, Mike is also in the We Get Around Network forum, W-G-A-N forum.com at Mike uh, Chihuahua, at Mike Chihuahua is his forum member name. So uh, so what's a BLK 360? I like a BLK 360. That's it. So this is it. This is this is like the entry level lidar scanner. Um, you know, typically uh, there are forty to fifty to eighty grand scanners. Oh, yeah, they're forty to fifty, eighty thousand dollars scanners. And so this is uh, really what democratized like being able to put these scanners on small to mid level architecture sites um, or small to mid level development sites. It's more affordable. You can get in and out quick, and um, you don't have that like, really expensive asset on site. Um, and so basically this, this um, one click to turn it on and um, it will take about 30 seconds to power up, the ring will turn green. And how we like to use these on site is either um, using the Matterport with the BLK to move through a, 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 a pretty open space or just once this turns green, you mount the, the scanner on the tripod, make sure it's super level. And then you just press the button once and it'll spin about a minute, a minute 50 spins and even Matterport sped up a little bit. I think it's like a minute 30 spins when it's on the app and, and you're running it through. Uh, it doesn't feel like the four minute spins when it first came out. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's more, definitely more usable. So right here. Um, so the, so the Leica BLK 360, this is, this is a, a scanner, a LIDAR scanner. Yeah. A LIDAR scanner. So that stands for light detection and ranging. Um, so it's in the same family of, of, um, uh, the Doppler effect of radar, sonar, um, the other measurement forms. This is used as light um, to measure. And so this scanner will shoot uh, 20 meters, and then that will be um, accurate to plus or minus uh, six millimeters about. Um, so tw tw 20 meters, help me out. That's, is that about 60 feet? 60 feet, yeah, about that, a little bit more. And, um, and so it will shoot that far. And then the width of that laser beam, when you're looking at the wall is actually how that, that accuracy is measured. So the width of that laser beam is that six millimeter difference is, is as it hits the wall and draws that wall. So in, in LIDAR scanning, um, we like to look at accuracy by how thin that line is, you know, that is being drawn. And then the width of that line. So the scanner that's one level up from this uh, will shoot 40 meters plus or minus uh, two millimeters would be how thick the line is that it's drawn the reality file. Um, okay, so th this kind of begs a lot of questions. So uh, uh, I, I could imagine then when, oh, it's, it's turning right now, it's rotating. Right now it's taking a, a low density scan, yeah. And th does it also take pictures? Yes, um, and that's what we love about the BLK, like um, is that the color data that it produces, you know, for, and how small that file actually is with the, with the LiDAR point cloud. And so it has three, it has three cameras on it. So if, if, the cam, if the BLK is spinning, you want to stop it uh, mid-spin, just one click to turn it off. And so on this side of the camera, you have uh, your thermal lens on the bottom. So that will actually, that's a, that's a FLIR camera in the BLK 360. So that will pull your temperature values. Spell, spell that for me. Uh, F-L-I-R, a FLIR camera. I think okay. they're out of Boston. They produce a lot of cameras. They certify thermologists and stuff like that. Okay. And then you have... Um, uh, panorama camera, camera on the bottom here, and then another pano camera up top. So it has three cameras on it. And so that, that, um, that 
uh, thermal camera will give you plus or minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you know, so if you select the point cloud, once this data is produced in, in um, you'll, you'll be able to pull the temperature value like to a crazy degree. You know? so, so from what you just said, I, you know, I, I, I started the show out by saying Matterport plus like a BLK 360, 20 questions and answers. I, I don't know if I can limit it to 20. I think it's like, I got like a thousand questions just based on what you said in that, that small amount of time. So mm -hmm. I, I think really, let me try this next question and, and, uh, and it'll probably spark yet more questions. Uh, uh, and, and, I, and I guess I probably should make a statement first, is that okay. when Leica first, when the Leica BLK360 camera first came out, it's a scanner and a camera, what was super significant about it was, A, was the price point. Mm -hmm. That was, is it, was it like half of what the nearest competing camera was at the time? Yeah. Um, like, like, uh, like for what it can produce, um, like a third of the price. Yeah. A third of the price. So it was super yeah. significant from a price standpoint. S second is it captured the photography in addition to capturing the depth data. Right. And then the third thing I'd add, it would probably be, um, uh, how malleable are, are the partnerships that they created like with Matterport to bring it to the consumer market, like the software programming, like the hardware, firmware and software um, was kind of brilliant. Um, so it, it's super significant that, that Leica struck a deal with Matterport to mm -hmm. enable the Matterport platform to, I would say, easily and seamlessly pair a Matterport Pro a, a, a Matterport scan where you can use both the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera and the Leica BLK360 camera scanner totally. together. Yeah. And that's super significant. I think so, yeah. It's, it's been significant. And, and um, uh, the price point on the scanner hasn't moved. You know, it hasn't depreciated in value. And that's similar to a lot of other instruments like this. They just, they don't depreciate, so. At least now we'll see. In cell phones. Right. Awesome. So uh, when do I need to use a BLK 360 paired with a Matterport Pro 2 camera? So the environment that we're using uh, that, that couple um, most is, is in the retail space. A lot of retail is turning over. There's a lot of um, new companies moving in. And so like the big open space where um, you need to take into consideration of the floor slope um, uh, that's when you would use both those cameras. And so you kind of get, um, you're, you're building the Matterport tour. It's about a minute, 30 spins, um, in, in the retail environment is, is where I'd see that use most. Cause the square footage are all under 10,000 square feet. It's nothing crazy. Uh, and then, you know, you always have that raw data on the scanner that you can pull off and put in the cyclone register 360 and, and, and put that raw data together, um, after the fact, if you don't like how it's looking in Matterport. Okay. So I, we'll come back and talk about a non matterport use of, of the uh, the scan data yeah when when you talked about the retail I, I i i could imagine one was the the ceiling height because you talked about that the 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 scanner can see up to about 60 feet so if you're doing a a, a big box retail space Indeed. this scanner the, the blk360 is giving you the depth data to the ceiling where the Matterport Pro 2 camera maybe is two, two and a half stories and can't see the ceiling. Is, is that? Correct, yeah. And that's key because a, a lot of the data that we extract is the light, lighting fixtures uh, and how they're lining up with the aisles and everything like that. So the, the ceiling data is, is critical in retail. And I, and I think the second thing I'm guessing at here, but when you're talking about 100,000 square feet, I'm, I'm guessing that you can do 100,000 square feet much faster with the BLK360 rather than the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera because it sees farther and therefore you can move the BLK360 tripod a greater distance and so you don't need as many scan points. Yeah, absolutely. You can probably um, you know do 20 steps in a big open warehouse with the BLK and, and still use the Matterport app and, and have it pick up no problem. Um, so if you had the big, the big open space, um, you know, hundred thousand square foot, say it's just all open retail or open, uh, warehouse, uh, you probably can get it out of there in six hours, 
you know, with the BLK and Matterport camera, which is pretty good um, versus, um, you know, three times as many scan points and something like that, you know, and multiple uh, uh, alignment errors and all that stuff. So uh, do you have alignment errors when you use a BLK 360 paired with the Matterport capture app? You do, um, but it's much less. So same error message. And that's what's nice about it too. It's, it's giving you the same feedback as if you were running the Matterport on how, how to do it. It's really just you know, taking care of the instrument, making sure it's level. And, and that's, uh, that's what's nice about, you know, uh, the matter, if you're a Matterport provider, um, you know, getting into that realm is, is not a, a big learning curve. Ah, so that, that's probably a key thing for Matterport, a Matterport service provider or a company that's using a Matterport Pro 2 3D camera, thinking about a BLK 360, it just pairs with the Matterport Capture app, just like a Matterport Pro 2 3D camera. Uh, yeah, yeah, same setup. So you just turn the, the camera on until it's um, until it's green like this. Open the Matterport app up and then connect to this thing's Wi-Fi as well. That's it has its own Wi-Fi and then um, and then the the button's activated. You see it ready to go, and uh, and it just says BLK instead of Matterport. So and can you switch if you started with a Pro Two? Can you switch to a BLK three hundred and sixty? If you started with a BLK three hundred and sixty, can you switch to a Pro Two? And vice versa throughout the scanning yeah. process for because I, I I could imagine you might go from a giant warehouse. But then it goes into maybe a, a smaller office setting attached to a warehouse or to a retail space. And there may be a reason to switch to a Pro 2 uh, for capture versus the BLK 360 in a big open space. So you can go, yeah, you can go back and forth um, any which way with it. The, the, one, the one nuance uh, that you want to do if you're doing that is um, you want your you want to connect to your latest scan, you know, the dark, the darkest scan. So if it's Matterport circles on your on your capture app map. Um, you want to stick the BLK like right on top of that dark blue scan that was most recent and then switch it over. You just want to make sure that wherever that dark blue or the dark green scan, if you're using the BLK on your, your capture app, that you're, you're, you're setting the camera like directly on top of that spot. And then, so for, so for, for clarification, uh, if I just scanned with the Matterport Pro 2 and I'm switching to a BLK 360, don't take a step. Don't, don't go moving, uh, uh, 20 steps or 10 steps because you really need the scan data kind of to magically connect. Right. So if, if you already have been doing that report and um, you got a dark blue scan on the other side of the facility and you want to switch to a BLK on the opposite side of the facility, you want to start with Matterport on that opposite side of the facility to get that, that dark blue uh, scan location on your Matterport capture app. And then uh, you'd switch it um, to the BLK scanner and it'll pick up right on top of that. So essentially, when you switch, you you don't move the tripod. Um, you don't have to, yeah. But but um, but yeah, it, it can be a little bit off. It doesn't have to be right on top. A little a little bit off, but you really don't want to go twenty feet away or sixty uh -huh. feet away because you'll likely get a, a scan error that that says can't can't attach the scan data. A absolutely, yeah. You want to be within five feet of that of that dark that most previous scan. Awesome. So on the BLK three hundred and sixty, uh, you turned it on. I imagine you could turn it off. Are there other yeah. buttons, other settings? They just came out um, uh, with an attachment that you can put on the inside to extract data off this, but it's really simple. That's, that's it. You know, you press it once to turn it on and then you hold down the button to turn it off. And then um, this has a hard drive um, that stores all that raw information on there. So you can pull it into the other, other softwares. And um, it's as simple as that. It's, it's really, I mean, it's probably easier to run the Matterport, I'd say. Interesting. Now, I recall when this came out that there were settings that you could set for either the accuracy. I don't know, maybe it was the length of time that it rotated and there was trade offs to make. Is that not the case today? You can you can do that. We keep everything on low density because we're, we're drafting from that information. Ah, So and, uh, please explain that. And, and how do I change density? What, what, what are you scanning at low density? That means there must be high density or medium density. Yeah, when are yeah. you choosing the setting and, and is that a physical setting change on the camera or is that actually within the Matterport capture app? There's, there's no toggle or, or buttons besides for this power button on the device, but you would, um, so you can go through Matterport now, which has saved us a few times in the field for when we forgot our laptops. Um, but typically we would connect this to our, our PC uh, into uh, what's called the BLK data manager and, and change it. But now we can connect to Matterport and then change it in the capture app, like what density you want. And then you just turn that off and then keep pressing the button or run it through the app 
Um, but it will change that. Great. Help us understand density. What are, what are our options and wh when do we pick which set option? So I haven't found a, a, um, a use case. I, I could think of a use case, but I haven't, we haven't come across one where we're switching this camera from, from low density. Like this whole year, we run this camera on low density because it's plenty of data to draft from, and it's not going to change the accuracy. It's going to change the detail. Um, so all, all it's going to do is just create a denser point cloud um, that you'd be able to just see more information there. So if you were to do, if you were modeling um, uh, crown molding, you know, for example, you would probably want to get the camera pretty close to that in 10 feet and do a high density scan so you can see all the uh, intricacies of that. Um, you know, maybe a historical facade might be a use case, but again, uh, you are you're pulling plenty of information from that. Um, I haven't really, I mean, so Matterport lets you run the BLK 360 on low density now, which is, I think sped it up significantly, but you used to have to have it set to um, medium density and HDR photography, but now you can do, um, which, which, which would take at least three minutes to do it that way. Now it's a minute 50, like you kind of can feel it moving pretty fast. And is it low density plus HDR? No, you don't have, you don't even have to do HDR anymore, at least on my end. So you can just run the camera, um, without the HDR setting and you're still going to get that Matterport picture. So if, if I wanted a better quality photography, do I need do I need the HDR setting? Yes, absolutely. And is that set within the Matterport Capture app? You can you can set it, set it there. You know, so you can turn it on low density. But if you do want that really good photosphere, um, you you definitely uh, want to keep HDR on for sure. So it, it sounds like that when you do uh, uh, when when robotic imaging is doing scanning, it sounds like your clients are mostly interested in the depth data, the point cloud, rather than the photography. Is that the case? Uh, we haven't um, done a marketing virtual tour in a long time, um, but it's mostly just yeah. So so like. Uh, two different scans, like you could be, you could be in there, you know, in the scan, you're just kind of moving through the property, however we can get through as fast as possible we can get through. Um, and, uh, and we're not necessarily worried about how it looks, but we, we have done that in the past where we've done like um, a garden outside, you know, like a, a, a garden conservatory where uh, we use the, the HDR and it looks, look, we, we had to make it look nice. And that's when we would, you know, use that setting. So it, uh, gosh, I, I just hit a fork in the road. So I, in, so one of the forks is about, uh, it sounds like scanning outdoors, Matterport Pro 2 3D camera, really not an outdoor solution. Yes, there's 360 views, but that's not a uh, depth data. So if you actually want depth data outside, BLK 360, uh, can you scan in bright sunlight with a BLK 360? Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, no issues. No issues, yeah. And, for, and another point, like for, for retail there, um, like it's perfect for a retail facade, you know, where you can get that outdoor data and then that depth information that would um, complement the Matterport 360 data. So it sounds like for two reasons, outdoors, one is actually to get the depth data to be able to scan successfully. If you do need the photography, it, it can do the, uh, the, the quality uh, photo sphere to construct the uh, virtual tour uh, digital twin that we think of as Matterport, uh, and also get higher up on the facade. So uh, 60 feet, how many stories is that about? Uh, probably about four or five stories. Like, um, so if you, know, you have a building, a warehouse, and it's four or five stories, the, the BLK 360 on the ground should be able to capture the scan points of the exterior where the Matterport camera would have trouble for two reasons. One, uh, uh, because it's, uh, uh, because of the technology that the Pro 2 uses for depth data. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not, it, A, it's not gonna be successful typically outdoors, nor be able to, to, to capture uh, the height that the BLK 360. Right. Going back to use cases for, for BLK 360, uh, you, you mentioned a retail space, I think a warehouse. Uh, what's the use case of scanning in a totally empty warehouse? Uh, so for, for um, uh, we, we see a lot of warehousing logistics companies coming in and they're planning their shelving. And then also um, 
Uh, with this candle, with the LIDAR data, the matter report, we also pull some spot elevations in certain areas, not across the entire floor, but like, you know, you identify a ramp and like how high that would be. Um, and so like um, ramp, ramp prefabrication would be one, you know, measuring ramps and, and how big they need to be. And then um, uh, omni-channel retail. So like um, if, we, if an empty warehouse is being scanned, that's just to put the shelving in there and get the general uh, layout right. And then uh, what, we're, what we're seeing is that like after we're scanning the facilities, maybe four or three months after, um, they, they have the facility fit out and they want to move the shelves around. And so they'll come back and they'll use the data again um, and, um, you know, shift the optimal layout, you know, uh, for, for, for retail. And then uh, the exterior data would be for signage and then also graphics in the windows, like print, print graphics. Um, so pulling that information off there and then um, also just like, like the bigger signage, the, the single door signage, yeah. This, this is super helpful. If, uh, if I'm a Matterport service provider, my ears are perking up because I'm trying to think of, oh, you know, what else can I do other than residential real estate? Uh, I can't do some of the things you're describing with a pro two. So it may actually be the motivation to buy or rent uh, a BLK 360 in order to be able to have additional uh, um, verticals that the photographer can uh, service. So uh, uh, what, what other verticals or what other use cases does a, a BLK 360 particularly paired with a Matterport platform. Um, yeah. They... Um, so uh, we've been doing some parking lot scans, you know, and some, some streetscape scans or even just like scanning on the individual facade. Um, it would just, it's just nice to have, you know, one camera, uh, one file. And, um, and so like, we'll go and, you know, scan a facade for you know, under a thousand dollars in Philly uh, and quickly draft it up, you know, cause it, it's like, 10 minutes on site just to walk like right outside the, the street there. So that's another one. Um, uh, and we use Matterport separately, not paired with the uh, RTC or paired with the um, BLK 360 for uh, like large old industrial buildings. I can show you a, a good one too of that. Um, why, where, why don't we take a look at a couple of scans and we'll, as you're, as you're showing us, maybe that'll spark some more discussion yeah. about what makes the BLK 360 unique uh, and what kind of, uh, uh, you, you want to go ahead and uh, share your screen uh, there and uh, yeah. show us. And I, I think so while, while you're showing us some examples, I think that will help talk about some more use cases and some more reasons where the BLK 360 uh, excels using it paired with a Matterport. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, why don't you tell us what we're looking at here and how it was shot? So this was actually, uh, the, this is the first um, uh, BLK360 scan I, I did uh, because the Matterport obviously in here had a lot of issues. I, I got up to like this wall. Um, and so this is all BLK360, you see in the shadow here, here's the instrument. Did, did you try shooting this space with the Matterport Pro 2? Yeah, because I'm yeah. looking at it and I, I the two things that come to mind was the, the space is too big. There's there's no common points to to get a successful connection of scans. Uh, and I probably can't get to the Maybe I can get to the ceiling. Uh, what, what were the problems that you experienced the doing? So this? we got so we started doing this. Um, we got this whole room done. We're like, yes, we did it. And or it's working. And then. Um, and then it started, we started having issues at this, at this pillar here. And this is in 2017 when we were really just getting started. And um, we tried to wrap um, like between these, we tried to make like, like rooms with, with, um, with a paper basically by wrapping them around each column. And uh, it, it was a nightmare. We had to scan it a bunch of times. And then we ended up getting the BLK 360 in here. And we got this done in about six hours. Um, did, you, did you try April tags or? Tried everything. You tried all the, all the April tags. You know, like, and we were building a, like like with paper, like just big um, spools of paper just through each thing and trying to create rooms, putting objects on the ground. Got it done. It just the walls were all bent. And that's the number one thing that we look for when it comes to Matterport data is, um, is walls bending, windows flaring out, um, you know, scans on top of each other. Um, so we've really been like picking apart the Matterport data uh, this last year for, for that information. So and this so is probably a really great example for a, a, uh, um, 
a Matterport photographer using a Pro 2 that if you're asked the quote on this space, you can expect multiple issues. Uh, the least, I don't even know if the least of which it would take you forever, even if you could be successful. Yeah, yeah, it was six scans. It was brutal. It was freezing cold in here. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, we learned a lot. We, we, we bought, because we could not scan this property, we, we bought a BLK 360. Um, and, and that uh, enabled you to uh, scan in a reasonable amount of time, not have uh, uh, scan connection issues. The size of the space was, was no longer a problem. Uh, I, I could imagine that somebody, did, did the client need to know um, about the level of the floor? Is that an issue? In so terms all, they, all they wanted for this was, um, uh, was a wall-to-wall, -wall, like just as-built 2D floor plan drawn. And so that's, that's all they needed. Um, like you can't set like the, the data, whatever, whenever you run the data through Matterport, it's going to, um, you know, really make the data low, lower quality, as you can see here, lots of light. Um, so this looks actually much different than the point cloud that the, the, the file produces. It just, when Matterport renders it, it makes the file smaller. So. So, well, that probably begs other questions, but if you could go back maybe just to the dollhouse for a, a second, mm -hmm. uh, at, at, the, at the very least, the, the dollhouse actually could see the ceiling. And uh, to your point, if you needed the infrastructure, I'm not sure it was helpful. Was it helpful in this space or actually it was helpful to know where those beams were and uh, for somebody that's trying to do an installation in, in there? It was good for like, uh, uh, so what the developer did with our CAD drawings was send it to the 30 contractors that were bidding on this project to do uh, the roofing installation, just to get like a, like a general estimate, um, to do the floor estimations and just get all of his bids in on the front end of the project. And this, this actually just, this project just finished. It's a, um, uh, this was adaptive reuse for an Amazon site. And um, so this is like, a, uh, now it's now an Amazon site. They blew this entire wall off, out. Um, so it's interesting, like getting into the space as this technology is rolling out, you kind of start seeing your projects, you know, come to fruition. Like the data has been used. So in like, this case, it was was it the the owner that was that was, uh, or was it a property manager? So it was the owner um, with a request from the architect. Ah, okay. So at, at that point, there wasn't even a general contractor on the project. Uh, it sounds right. like so. This was actually probably used even to help uh, general contractors get their hand, hands around understanding the scale and the scope of the project because they had uh, they, they 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 understood this this space in a dimensionally accurate way. Yeah, or accurate enough for for their takeoffs and planning. You know, just to get like a general bid in there. Okay, I think you mentioned that you used the the Matterport Pro Two camera on this this scan as well. Yep, and uh, so right here you can see this is the BLK360 on this scan. And you can kind of tell by like these lines that are drawn in the data in the photosphere. And um, as you see, we jump to this lily pad here and this is a Matterport data. So you can see the, the image gets crisper. Um, sure that's not a hockey puck? Where's that, up top here? I, I've <laughs> never heard it called the lily pad. I like that. I mean, I've heard <laughs> spins, scans, but now we got lily pads. I like hockey puck too, though. The lily pads. Okay, are cool. lily pad. I might start using that. Yeah. Uh, so weird. Ah, I see a Matterport uh, camera here. Yeah. So this is um, this is where I jumped. And so you can, you see like, right here. You you don't have to have them like right on top of each other, but you you definitely want them within five to ten feet of each other when you switch the cameras. And so to scan this, this right here, this is probably about uh, five offices in here. And um, uh, to scan out the BLK would probably take two hours um, to do this with one BLK versus a Matterport you're in and out of here in like 20 minutes. So, and, so, the, so the advantage of a Pro 2 is speed versus yeah. a BLK 360. And in this space, going into the office space, the, the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera was a better choice. Uh, uh, you could have done it with the BLK 360, just would have taken a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You gotta ask like how, how soon um, your client needs that information um, is a big one that we've been asking this year. Like, are you okay you know, with the, the conceptually designing from a Matterport um, 
you know, versus like a BLK scanner. So it's just like all about like sharing your scanner tolerances with them. Uh, ah, because the, I, I, uh, what, what's the difference in accuracy between uh, a, a Matterport Pro 2 and a BLK 360 related to the point cloud data that the client actually needed you to create, I want to say, drawings from? Yeah, and and so the um, I mean, the accuracy on the on the uh, BLK it's a, it's a true scientific instrument for measuring, so that's going to be consistent every time. The Matterport data is a different animal because you really have to know uh, you really have to just be looking at the data coming in as you're scanning. Um, so they don't they say you know within ninety nine percent accuracy, which is like really hard to explain to a lot of clients. So we kind of break it down and you know talk about the scanning. So. There is no um, uh, uh, like scale necessarily for the Matterport, um, but the BLK, yeah, that's what you have. You shoot you know, 20 meters at plus or minus six millimeters. Do you, um, I don't want to ask you for anything that's confidential. I don't know if you have it, but do you have the, the work output that you created from this project? Uh, I think I do actually, not this file. Or if you could show us an example of, where you take it to the next step of what the deliverable is to the, uh, even the showing us the point cloud and, and, um, right. And so this is like, this is that raw like data. Um, it's much more valuable. Um, you know, as you can see here for your like lighting fixtures and locations, um, I'll let this render for a second, but, um, but this is that, that raw information that like, makes the design and planning process very certain. There's no like ifs, um, there's no six inch difference in some situations. Um, uh, so this is, this is the process that, um, so uh, unifying this point cloud and what's called point cloud registration um, is what we do after we get off site. We, we uh, load this uh, Matterport data or BLK360 data or other LiDAR scanner data um, into uh, what's called registration software. And then uh, that's where we get the file accurate and ready for uh, the design software. So you went a little bit fast for me. Okay. So you went a little bit fast. So is this ordering a Matterport matter pack? Is that the, the next step after the, the scan has been processed? Yeah, so, um, so the Matterport workflow uh, to generate the point cloud you know, looks like this, where you, you know, buy this matter pack. Yes. And then um, what you do, let me find one that we've already purchased. Okay. And then I, I see also that Matterport has recently added a, a scan to BIM option as well. I don't know if you've had a chance to use that yet. If, if so, if you can go into that uh, Absolutely. BIM file beta. Absolutely. Um, so, um, so the scan of BIM that Matter, Matterport creates is uh, similar, you know, to what we do um, in in the sense that um, you know they're, they're creating like these three D models. And so, uh, going back to what we were talking about with the point cloud workflow initially, so here's the Matter Pack. It just downloaded. This is that XYZ file, and then you're going to take that XYZ file and put it into uh, Autodesk Recap. And that's like your point cloud portal. Um, so is, is that a, a proprietary process that you go through to, to bring a, is it the XYZ file that you're bringing into Autodesk Recap? Yeah, so, so you're, you're just taking this XYZ file. It's not proprietary or anything. It's, it's um, Autodesk makes Recap. So if you have um, any of the CAD softwares, you should have Recap with that. And so you just import this into recap and it will render, you know, uh, this type of file at this point cloud and you'll, you'll see it in, you know, here's the program. Sorry, Dan, let me see if I can. That, make that's it. okay. Um, so that's like, you could think of Autodesk recap right here. If you, if you look closely, this is, um, this is like how the raw data uh, information comes in. And then so from, the, hang on, I'm going a little bit fast for me, Mike. So yeah. you're in, Autodesk recap a software program that enables you to import a XYZ file. And that XYZ file is one of the deliverables that are available in the Matterport matter pack. Correct. Yep. And that's and once you have it in recap, then what happens? 
So after it's in recap, you probably you want to trim data like this. This is just coming off the ceiling. This probably has some lights. So you want to trim trim the data. Um, Matterport's nice. You can see um, when you import a Matterport cl uh, cloud into recap, it's got it's zero point right on the plane. So it sits very, very similar to this. So it comes in nicely. Um, and then you export this file from recap into an RCS file. And that's an option in recap. I have, I'm on a Mac right now, or I'd show you. That's okay. okay. And then the RCS file can then be imported into programs like SketchUp and Revit. Right, correct. Okay, so be, be, before we lose half our viewers here, I think probably the important thing to say is if you're a Matterport service provider or you're using a Matterport Pro 2 camera, you don't actually have to understand any of what Mike is showing us now. Your, your client is going to tell you something like, uh, I need my file in Revit or in SketchUp, in SketchUp. And uh, at that point, I want to say you, you send an email to Mike, M-I-K-E at R-O-B-O-I-N-G dot com, or you go to roboticimaging.io, and you say, hey, I'm about to do a, a Matterport plus BLK 360 scan. Once I have my Matterport Matter Pack, can you convert that file into a .rvt, a Revit file, or a .skp file, a SketchUp file, and you say? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that's a service, that's one of the services that robotic imaging uh, offers, and, and therefore, all, all the stuff we're showing you today, I think is, is, is super interesting to see that you went from Matterport plus a Leica BLK360 to create a Matterport digital twin to then export the file as a, uh, and then to buy the Matterport add-on of a Matterport Matter pack that includes a .xyz file that then can be used by a company like Robotic Imaging to convert it to whatever file format, whatever CAD file format that the client ultimately needs, which is typically a .rvt or a .skp file. Yeah, or .dwg is. Or, is or .dwg. Okay, awesome. So um, do you have just an, ex an, an example? Maybe if we could go back, you were showing a the raw data as a point cloud, but I think you also talked about uh, the kind of file that you deliver to the client, what, what the client needed in this case, what was it? Was it some kind of drawing in a, in a .dwg file? Was it? Yeah, so this is, I, I can show you the, the .dwg and, and usually if it's a .dwg file, I mean, they can be in 3D, but primarily they're just 2D drawings. It's like interchangeable. You say .dwg, it, they want 2D CAD. Uh, this is an RVT file and what we think is the future of all drafting. Um, you know, the, the adoption rate for like architecture firms um, into 3D Revit, that's what this is, um, has been semi-slow, but it's picking up. Um, I think like um, because of the digital twin movement. Um, and so uh, everything here can be drawn uh, interior and exterior, you know, down to that millimeter if you're close enough to the object. So, so who, who's draw, who drew this? Uh, we did. So and drew this in uh, by using by using the Matterport digital twin that was using a Leica BLK360 camera and maybe in conjunction with the Matterport Pro 2 camera, bought the Matter Pack, uh, converted it uh, in, in uh, Autodesk Recap, uh, exported it into Revit. Uh, correct. Yep. And but it didn't look like this. It didn't look like this. And this is also um, we had other scanners on this site. I don't want people to think that they can just rip a Matterport and get this information by any means. Um, we use the Matterport to help us through certain areas like the tight rooms and closets. Um, it's faster to extract that information if you can just section off a point cloud of a big building like this and um, and then just keep that Matterport. And then through like the bigger open areas, like where the ceilings are higher than 12 feet, 
you're going to want to use that BLK 360 or uh, other higher grade scanners. For was, sure. was this the was this the the open warehouse that you were showing us? No, this is a, a school. project. Uh, that yeah. that's fine. Okay, so uh, so you deliver this to a client. What do you call this? Do you just call it a a Revit file? A three D um, architectural Revit model. Three D architectural Revit file, and then what does the client do with this? So the client throws this into Revit, um, which would be their design software. Uh, and they, um, they'll start putting up, placing um, like uh, the objects in here that they want to fit the facility out with. So they start going through their design process. They start doing their schematic designs uh, mostly from this. And um, it's really uh, just to plan. They plan more efficiently, faster, more accurately. So with this tip, so this is typically done when, when a building exists, but there's, there was no CAD originally done or they can't find the CAD or the building has changed so much since the original building that even if you looked at the original CAD, it's really not helpful. So right. this, this is really where the architect begins their work of mm -hmm. renovation, reimagining how that space might be used. Right. It, it, exactly. Dan, if you had a marketing one page or like for this type of work, like, um, that would, those are the, those are the hot buttons that you'd say, like a building that doesn't have any drawings. It's, it's just out there. Are, there are, there's a ton of buildings out there uh, in the commercial space that just don't have any information yet. So what did everybody do before there was Matterport, before there was laser scanners? Uh, they're still doing it. Um, they'll, ha they'll hire students to go out and, um, uh, just point and shoot measure, build their, their line drawings mostly. Uh, and then they take the, the, the field measurements from their um, iPad you know, uh, now and then start, just start drawing it in Revit manually uh, without a background. So it, is that how the majority of architects are working today? Still to this day, um, but it's getting, it's getting pretty cool. Like, um, but we're seeing that like, a lot of architects are, are, are like, I, you call them nowadays, and they're like, oh, like, we're really thinking about that. We we're thinking about getting a laser scanner. Like it's just happening like the last year, it seems. I, I, think the, I think the amazing thing is, I mean, I'm looking at the detail, the precision, the accuracy of capturing an existing space. And I'm thinking, you know, if an architect went out and measured for themselves and took pictures for, for, by themselves or even sent an army of students to go out and, and capture, they could never capture the level of detail, they probably can only take key measurements of a space, which right. means they probably have to keep going back to the space and back to the space. And every time there's a question about the ceiling, because they only told you the ceiling was this length and this width, or maybe here's where the six pillars were and how wide the pillars were, but they don't have everything in between the pillars. They have to keep going out and measure, 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 right. or take pictures again. Right. And the Matterport's really popular for that, that type of work, just confirming counting, you know, really just counting and making sure that that's where it's supposed to be, you know, and that matches the drawing. Um, but, um, well, I'm going to try and get us back onto Matterport, but it looks like yeah. you wanted to show us something super interesting here. So I, 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 I love that. What is it that you want to show us? So, yeah, so this is, um, uh, and I'll pull up the, uh, virtual tour for this too, that then this is the other example that we were talking about. Um, where we, we scanned that this entire thing with the BLK using the Matterport app. Uh, let's see. So, um, uh, so this is, this is an example of a file then, um, of, uh, hundred percent BLK, um, in this facility. Um, and then. I'm yep. sorry, could you take us a wide screen on that so we could uh, yes. a little bit more detail? Yep, thank you. All right. So you can see here, this is like, um, you know, traditional errors with the BLK, it's just not mastering the light like Matterport has mastered. Um, so this is shot totally with the BLK 360. Correct. Was this using the Matterport platform or was this done? Yeah, this was using the Matterport Capture app. Matterport Capture app plus Leica BLK 360 
entirely shot with the BLK 360. So we're right now we're we're seeing the photography view of it. Yeah. And you can see it's a little washed. It doesn't get your, your blue sky. Um, and, and, and again, this is this is low density. This has not had HDR turned on. If you did have HDR turned on, you can expect to get rid of all this light, all the white. Uh, but to, to the point of the use case, we haven't discussed the use case, but I would imagine marketing this space as is was not high on the list. No. Yeah, they just wanted a uh, rough and dirty matter report. Um, and then uh, uh, the use case for this um, is a historical application. So uh, we need to model all these brick soldiers up here, if you can see up here. So we're actually like 90% done this project, but um, uh, they need all these things to a quarter of an inch. Um, and wow. for, the, for the historical board to get um, passed through uh, the municipality, uh, that's the kind of documentation that's required to touch this, um, this older building here. And so another application too, from, from a laser scanning standpoint that I can mention briefly here, um, is we had to inspect all the steel in the basement here. And so what we did was just taking, as, as you know, um, taking videos and embedding them in here and just, uh, you know, so if, if you're servicing an architect in this space and you need to get close up steel or they need to know how many plates are on that, you know, how, how uh, yeah, sorry, how many plates are, are yeah, on there. Um, so we'll take like close up photos like this so the architect can inspect. If you look at an architect's uh, documentation workflow and they're out there with their cell phone doing all sorts of videos like this. So if you have, um, you know, that semi-geospecific location you know, tagged in the matter report, um, it's really a nice like organizer for all your field data if you could just you know, tag it in there. So uh, that's what we had to do for all, all these beams. So. so all those tags are videos? All these tags are just close-up videos of, of the um, uh, the conditions of, of these this old steel here. And you can see it, this thing's ready to come down. So, and then so our, our Revit modelers, our, our CAD drafting team, um, Dan will we'll have that Matterport tour and then they'll be drafting in, um, in, in that RVT file, um, that, so, that detail. So I, I think what I was hearing, Mike, was yet some more use cases. So, uh, client needed to get the okay of the zoning board for a historic building prior to beginning construction. And yes. to do that, they needed a, uh, a lot of, uh, at a very detailed level to be able to capture the architectural features of that building, presumably we're going to keep that in their final design as being part of what is historic about that building. Um, uh, I, I'd love to keep asking you about use cases. Um, uh, I'm, I'm interested kind of in, in two things, use cases for a BLK 360 paired with a Matterport. Mm -hmm. And also if it teases out anything else that's unique about that BLK 360 when it's paired with Matterport. I, I, I guess probably one of the ones we haven't talked about is just easy. Maybe you've mentioned that it's it's, it's super easy. easy. It's super easy. The price tags daunting with all, with all lidar instruments or all, all Leica instruments, um, but it's super simple. It's great technology. It's durable, um, and, and I, I think it's it's more enjoyable to scan. You know, with you know, because you have like a minute and thirty, and it's collecting much a lot like bigger space instead of every thirty seconds you're moving the camera uh, with a Matterport. So um, yeah, I, I think um, like having that in your toolkit to go outside. You know, whether you're doing a marketing tour or an architectural scan um, would be really valuable. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd probably say it's prop for, you know, for, you know, a busy, successful Matterport service provider or uh, a company that uh, is looking at our show today. And, you know, it's probably worth, you don't have to make the leap. I, I want to say it's $19,000 plus for the Leica BLK360. Yep. That doesn't have to be the first step is you could rent, try, experiment uh, right. as a first step, uh, contact robotic imaging and say, hey, I'd like to, 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 to rent a BLK 360 and go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and I'm also going to guess is that if I have an opportunity, because there, there, there are companies in the We Get Around Network forum who are actively from time to time looking for BLK 360 plus Pro 2 
uh, service providers that if you have an opportunity to quote on a job is not to think, oh, I don't have a BLK 360, I'm not eligible, uh, I'm, even though it's in my market. The answer should be, oh, I'll just rent a BLK 360, figure that into my quote back to the client, and I shouldn't have, correct me if I'm wrong, but I should not have one iota of angst about how to use a BLK 360 paired with the Matterport Capture app. No, yeah, I don't think any anything to be worried about. And um, uh, people will jump on the phone and, and can walk you through it on site, you know. And like the the iPad that you have to run a man report and the stand that you have, if you have like a, the, the standard Manfrotto, uh, like we bought um, your package down right when we um, got started, just a leveling mount clip uh, and that stand. Um, you need a $90 attachment to the top of that uh, mount report, traditional mount report stand, and you're good to go. Um, but I want to say with the Leica BLK360, I should probably get the tripod that's designed for the Leica BLK3. No? No, I don't think so. I mean, um, uh, we don't use it. We actually, I don't say it, but uh, it, uh, in that property that we were, we were scanning, it fell off on the first time using it. You know, so we don't, we, this stand got too hot and snapped off the top. So. Wow. Uh, I yeah. like to say when you, when you. We're well, sorry. Here, here's another scanner. <laughs> So um, probably the best investment that, that, that they made now that you are super busy, that uh, the robotic imaging is super busy uh, doing like a BLK 360 and also uh, an authorized reseller of like a BLK 360 cameras. Um, other other when you, I want to rack your brain, you know, what what other use cases? I mean, I mean, and maybe you don't even know client calls up and says, I need this space. I need to, you know, a scan um, and you, you don't even know what they're going to use it for. Or, or do you, I, I'm going to guess you do because you almost have to understand what level of accuracy they need in order to be able to answer the question. And I'm guessing, unless you know what the use case is, it's super hard for you to know whether you're going to have a happy client because they could just say, I want it scanned and you come right. in and scan it and they say, well, you know, Hey, I, it, it doesn't match up with my BIM model. Right, right. So it's all like um, anyone that says that they want like um, like the, for the first anyone that's coming to scan with you for the first time is going to look at like the scan date and say, oh, everything's in the scan date. We want everything, you know. And that wastes a lot a lot of time like drafting, and it's also really expensive to, to get all that detail. And so um, uh, you know, approaching like local architects and is asking them, what do you need to see measured? You know, what do you, like what's important to you? And you have your generic ten items. You can run off floors, floor ceilings, windows, doors. Um, you know, we have a list that we, that we send uh, clients and um, they might like for that specific project, they might need to see um, more detail on how tall the basement is um, because they're dealing with that one thing that's mission critical to get the project through. Um, and so like that, like the little analysis that are a little uh, note section you can have on your like request to quote form, you know, where they can plug in that information, the little details and notes on what they're looking to accomplish. Uh, is key because usually if, if you're dealing with anyone in the construction space, uh, it's all always mission critical cost and time, you know. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, like we see the local architects, the small to mid-level developers uh, being an awesome market to service that we've done really consistent work for. You lock arms with an architecture firm and they might send you everything that comes across their desk to quote, you know, just to quote and see if it makes sense. Are, are most of your clients architects or are they general contractors or yet something else? So mostly architects. Now, I don't know if it's, the, if, um, if it's how they adopt technology that's, you know, maybe it's slower than the general contractors. Um, and they don't have like a, a virtual design and construction department where they buy one laser scanner that sits in the closet for, for that they use quarterly, but it's mostly um, architects hey, here's your as-built drawing and model. If you're dealing with laser scanning in the construction realm, they're going to want specifics like, um, like where the concrete slab came out compared to the drawing. Can you scan this and compare it to where the design drawing is? They like, they like the clash detection. They like the um, analysis. Can you explain clash detection? So clash detection is taking uh, the design model, like how it's supposed to be, and overlaying it on uh, the point cloud or model or another model that was derived from the point cloud. And that's typically done in Autodesk Navisworks. And that's where you can, you, you can see the deviation um, versus cloud model and drawing. You know, so you see how close you are to reality. Well, shouldn't the 
the build BIM, the BIM model that was designed to say this is what the project's going to look like when the building's built? Shouldn't it be identical? And there's no and there's no clashes. Right. Exactly. And that's and that's a great tool that GCs. So you can tell that you need to understand why the GCs want that camera on their side of the fence. You know, they want to have that in-house to go, just go and check any any sub work that's been done. Um, so, so I want to say my understanding of clash detection is that 15 percent of a budget on a multi-million dollar project is related to to errors that are made during right. construction. And so if you can catch the clashes throughout the building process, then your chance of having very expensive uh, errors because it wasn't built as it was as it was designed could mm -hmm. save the general contractor, perhaps the client, uh, tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, that and safety, so. And what does safety mean in this context? Well, just, just like uh, installing something wrong or if there's a hard to reach area, like going out and measuring that, you know, hard to reach uh, location, you know, shoot 200 meters, you know, from the ground to get that steel I beam up there. Yeah, you know, they might be doing so. So, so, so given, so given that uh, using a BLK 360 with Matterport could save clients First, I want to say gobs of time. I don't know if, if that's a, a real word, gobs, but a, yeah. ton of, a ton of time in getting to the as-built uh, as opposed to taking a bazillion photos, taking a lot of laser measurements, and then somebody actually taking the time to redesign the space the way it, it is, which I'm, I can imagine architects hate to do because they, they want yeah. to design their work, not the building 30 years ago. Right, so, right. So I can imagine it saves a ton of time. And I also can imagine if you could help cut down the 15% uh, error budget that's been built in, that you could charge more for yeah. a scan that uh, was a BLK360. So can you make more money doing Matterport scans using a BLK360 rather than just the Matterport Pro 2? For sure. And you're just more dynamic. Like you, you can say you can scan any environment. So if you're scanning a construction site where there's no roof on it and sunlight's pouring in, um, you know, you could just do that. And a lot of people use Matterport in the construction space, it seems, for punch list items. You know, the, the, the younger guy goes and just runs the camera um, throughout the site. And then they send it to all the stakeholders and they're just checking out their punch list items uh, in the office. And so like that would be like every two days you'd see someone run through with a camera like that. Um, and then, um, uh, again, like the BLK 360, like it, it has a threshold for property size too. So like, I wouldn't use that camera on anything, um, more than, uh, 20,000 square feet, probably just, just the Matterport Pro 2 3d camera. A Matterport Pro 2 with a BLK 360 or just a BLK 360. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't go above 30,000 square feet using that raw, raw data. So there are certain thresholds. Ah, so for architectural purposes. So so yeah. even a space that's over 30,000 square feet for the purpose of architect getting to that as built, I think what I'm hearing is there are other solutions and there are other solutions that you would prefer to use. Is that a yet an, a different sc laser scanner? Yeah, same same, um, same family as the, as the BLK360, but uh, we will use the RTC360. There's Trimble systems out there that are really cool. Uh, Faro scanners out there that are really cool. Um, but, so uh, you're mentioning some some other brands. I, I'm going to say 40,000, 60,000, 80,000, 100,000, 200,000, yeah. 250,000. You could spend a million dollars presumably yeah. on a laser scanner, which goes back to the question of how accurate. But right. I, I want to say that's really beyond our, our scope for our right. audience who are Matterport Pro 2 camera users either a service provider or uh, an, an end user, perhaps a, 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 an architect or a general contractor. So I think what I'm hearing is if the space is bigger than 30,000 square feet, they should probably talk to you. And that, that probably means you offer consulting services uh, in order yeah. to help people stay out of a pickle. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any complex stru structures or scans or how to scan planning, um, uh, we'd be happy to help there and, or drafting and, and modeling as well. So, um, one thing that we were looking at in the Matterport uh, workshop uh, were add-ons, and one of the add-ons was Matterpack, but there was another add-on there that said uh, Matterport Scan to BIM Beta. Today is Thursday, November 4th, 2021, Matterport Scan BIM, uh, Matterport Scan to BIM Beta. Can, yeah. can you talk a little bit about that as to the extent that you've used that and how that's different for a workflow or is, is that is uh, yeah we, we we've used it um uh, or we have not used it yet we 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 do it we've experimented with the the pricing calculator that they have it's still twice as expensive and twice as long to get on site uh from than what we do but you know we'll see they'll, they'll, they'll ah, so there's an opportunity there for so for those yeah. that are watching the show and you might say oh well there's a solution called Matterport scan to BIM and uh -huh. they'll offer uh, you can buy from Matterport a Revit file, a SketchUp file uh, that that Matterport converts, or you could contact uh, Robotic Imaging and, and and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about using this Matterport scan to BIM beta. Uh, here's the scale and the scope of our project, and ask you for a quote on the exact same deliverables." And I think what I'm hearing is you're very competitive. Yeah, I think the pricing. Um uh, we were competitive, but the whole industry is, I think, with Matterport. I think it, they rolled that out and we're like, oh, that's really interesting. And did the pricing calculator. And they're like, oh, this is awesome because they're helping educate the market. Like, all we've been doing in the last few years, and, and we, don't, we, we like spending time on it, um, but it's a lot of uh, uh, what we do is the ed just educating, you know, just like, explaining ourselves versus just going to bid, you know, versus going and just submitting proposals all day. Um, so it's a good thing from an education standpoint that they've gotten into it and we're kind of um, uh, surprised that, you know, that, that that's what they're, they're doing um, in a great, in a great way. Um, I haven't ordered any, ordered any of the models yet. I think we downloaded one of the samples they have there. They look, they look really good. Um, it's just all about how you're deriving the data and what, what scanner you're using to, to pull that information and just, um, yeah, being, being certain of the applications of how you're servicing the client and what they're okay with. So uh, are, there other, um, are there other things that we should be talking about aside from Matterport plus um, BL, like a BLK 360? Um, or re really you've kind of answered that to say, hey, if you get over 30,000 square feet, there's likely to be other solutions, call us. Uh, if if you're, okay. you're about to take on a project before, and it looks like it's over your head, call you yeah totally yeah we'd be yeah. happy to scope uh, help help you scope create proposals uh or even be part of it because i i think there's this gap which which is here's the client and the client knows that they've heard of matterport and they know they've heard of like a blk 360 and they're saying oh you can go out and go create my sketchup file and i i think which should like you should be scratching your head if you're a matterport service provider and say well what is a SketchUp file, an SKP file, and how do I get that? And can I get that from Matterport? And before scan Matterport scan to BIM, the answer was you couldn't. You have to convert that file. And you, you, you showed, you talked about that earlier in the show today. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the piece I would say for Matterport service providers is, is don't be afraid just because you don't understand how you go from a, matter, a Matterport digital twin to a SketchUp file, because the answer is you, you get the file converted and you can contact robotic imaging and they could do that for you. Or you can experiment with Matterport scan to BIM beta and be able to order it as well. And even if you go that route, you still might find it's helpful to have somebody hold your hand on this process who may be able to be more competitive, to be competitive in terms of pricing and also probably help ask, help ask the questions that you yeah. need to ask your, your client. So if the, if the client just says, hey, I, I need a Matterport matter pack or I need a scan data or I need an XYZ file, uh, 
there's probably some questions that you're, you you got to ask the client in terms of, of what they expect for a deliverable, probably to some extent what you started to talk about on your checklist, accuracy mm -hmm. and to what level detail that you need. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing here, Mike, that robotic imaging can like be, you know, uh, the super person to come in to rescue the day by helping you get over the 100 yard line, if that's the right metaphor. Yeah, getting that, getting that first um, commercial scan or industrial scan, like or that new vertical going. Um, yeah, we'd be happy to help. And uh, we're excited to create some content with you this year, Dan, and make, maybe make some videos about it. You know, maybe we could do like, we can discuss, but like whiteboard sketches on how the scanner works, you know, the how-to videos and, and um, that good stuff, so. Yeah, that actually would be awesome. I. I, I, I do think there's this gap be, between, uh, let, I think of Matterport service providers is having the skill, the knowledge, the capability to do projects for architects and general contractors in, in the construction space for AEC and to, and to be working on as-builts and to be doing construction progress documentation. And when, and when the, the client needs the next level of detail, either because the Matterport Pro can't see high enough or it's not appropriate for the size of the space or it can't go outside or it's not fast enough for capture for whatever concern that there is a solution, uh, this BLK 360. And again, it may be, uh, you know, the, at the price of 19,000 plus, uh, it may be appropriate to rent before you buy, before you find out, but it sounds like this, this could open up a huge amount of business in other verticals and to be charging way more money than uh, a Matterport service provider may be in residential real estate. Because as I heard, as you say earlier in the show, Mike, this mm -hmm. the scan data is is way more valuable uh right. certainly way more valuable to robotic imaging clients than the the visual it's yeah. it's the end date it's the data that has value totally but you need them both they're like just like I, we draft twice as fast because we have a matter report pulled up on the other screen and the lidar data is in revit or cad and um uh, it's a perfect marriage when it comes to field existing conditions data so Awesome. Matterport plus Leica BLK360. Um, is there any question I haven't asked you about Matterport plus Leica BLK360 that we should chat about? Uh, I think we covered it. You know, you're the expert here too. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning just like uh, by everyone. So I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, you've taken the time to be on the show today to, to talk to us about Matterport plus Leica BLK360. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, Dan. I'm excited to do it again. Awesome. We've been visiting with Mike uh, Chihuahua. Mike is the co-founder of Robotic Imaging based in Philadelphia. That said, they scan across the United States and even around the globe in conjunction with other Matterport service providers that are using a BLK360 or even other uh, scanning uh, platforms. Uh, for uh, Mike in the greater Philadelphia, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV live at five. <laughs>